begin to pray in the spirit. Why you are speaking in tongues, you are coming out of any bondage. You are declaring your liberty. He says, stand fast, stand firm. Therefore, in the liberty tonight, you are being loose. You are being loose from any financial bondage, from any health bondage, from any representative of any bondage. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are loose in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Can you say I am free? I am free. Say I love freedom. I love freedom. You didn't say it as if you should. Say I love freedom. I love freedom. You see, when we say freedom, we say it and everybody have their own meaning of freedom. Mm. But why you say I love freedom? Which way? Which area? I'm going to share something with you before we conclude tonight. You see, somebody said, I love freedom. Mm. But then, to another sister, she needs freedom from sickness. To somebody, she needs freedom from finances. To somebody, she needs freedom from lack of peace at home. But what if when you say, I love freedom, you can both say, I love freedom in every area of my life. Hallelujah. Come on, say it one more to say, I love freedom. I love freedom. In every area of my life. My finances, I am free. In health, I am free. At home, I am free. In my work, I am free. In my business, I am free. Because when the Lord has given me freedom, I refuse to be back. I refuse to be a bondage again. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to just sit down briefly. I want to give you something. You know, I had wished that he would have let me enjoy the whole thing. But that's one of the big price we have to pay for being men and women of God. What I usually do sometimes, if I would have had the address, I wouldn't tell him. I would just sneak in. You know. But when he was sharing, realized that he said something that even though some Christians were set free, it is possible for people to go back and become Bound again. And now we that come from originally from Africa, my wife is American. She's an Igbo wife who is born in America. Amen. Why did I say that? She cook all our foods. And the other day, uh, you know, we were eating fufu at home, and uh, I was eating it with fork. And do you know what she born here? She said, "You are disgracing the fufu." I was eating it with fork, and she was eating it with hands. <laughs> And then she said, the African people, they will sue me for eating it with fun. So I love that woman of God. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. She's a prophetess of the Most High God. We work together. We are senior pastors in the church, you know, in Dallas. We have uh, branches and I planted several churches before I made the transition. But tonight, she was some, he was saying something about freedom. Now, oh, Jesus Christ. Before you leave here tonight, there's a certain freedom that you walk away with. There's a freedom that when you have it, even the devil will be so afraid to approach you. Because he knows that now you found something. Many can be free without knowing that they're free. Are you listening to me? For example, when Jesus said, Thou you shall know the truth, and the truth, you know, shall. Actually, King James said, make you free. And I love the idea of make. The right translation says set. And they look the same, but they're not. 
may means that it is of permanent but set comes after you are made for example if somebody have committed a crime in the state of texas and was sent to prison for five years for example are you following me now and then in january after serving maybe three years the governor of texas officially pardon his crime that day he's made free but he's still in jail and he doesn't know he's been pardoned he doesn't know that the governor of texas have pardoned his crime but he's in prison and maybe the prison guard didn't like him so they didn't even tell him are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. So they didn't tell him. So he's there serving his five years, not knowing that he is part on which month in the month of January. And then February passed, or March passed, and April passed. And in the month of May, you know, they give this prison newspapers. And when he found the newspaper, he was reading the front page just like as usual. All bad, bad news and bad news. And he comes at the corner and he say, on the fifth day of January 2015, the governor of Texas pardoned Mr. So 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 and so. The day he found out that information is the day he set free. He can walk out of that prison and be unstopped. But when was he made free? In January. So he served five months extra, extra due to ignorance. Mm. It would have been easy if somebody would have whispered. But, but, but God is not waiting for someone to come and knock at your door to tell you that you are free from financial failure. God is waiting for you to find out that two thousand years ago I was made free from financial failure. One of the things about bondage is you know, like I say, we that are raised in Africa, when we say bondage, we always talk about bondage of the devil in like demonizing. But one can be bound financially, and yet he's healthy. Mm -hmm. One can be bound with sickness, yet he's financially free. One can be bound in a bad marriage relationship why he has money and he is healthy but there is no peace at home so with all the money he has he has no freedom are you listening to this i want to show you something five women in the bible and we'll get out of here very soon five women in the bible that really did something these five women, they're not popularly recognized. You know, when you say five women, most people usually pick out uh, that could be probably Sarah, and if it is not Sarah, it would be probably maybe Sarah, and then Miriam, and then Deborah, and then they will jump all the way to marry the mother of Jesus. No, these five women, you hardly hear about them. But what they did, yeah. 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 what they did yeah. was different. You see, when you are bound, you, 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 you put yourself in a survival mode. In, 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 oh, Jesus Christ. Listen to this. There are people who are still recovering from their hurts. When you have bondage, you are recovering. You know, I'm trying to recover. Uh, things has been happening. I'm just trying to survive. But you see, when you stop the recovery zone and leave the recovery zone and enter into the discovery zone, you are not free yet. Because when you're hurt, it takes time. Some people say it takes time to heal. That's what the psychologist told us. But when Jesus said be healed, 
Did he send them to psychologists and say, go and take time to uh, recover and so that you can be free? And, no, 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 he said, be healed and be made whole. He doesn't need a long time to recover. Yes. If somebody says, well, I suffered a financial failure because I invested in the business, I've been trying to you know, recover all these years. No, you have to get out of that recovery zone and get into the discovery zone because there is something waiting outside of that zone for you to discover. And until you get into the discovery zone, you will live a survival life. But tonight, you're coming out of recovery zone and you're getting into the discovery zone because there are greatness waiting for you to be discovered. Hallelujah. Five women in the Bible. You'd be surprised that their names are not popular. But what they did should have been very popular. Yeah. I, I, I've talked about these five women. I've taught it in women's conference. I've taught it even in men's conference. Because what they did was religiously out of order. Yes, yes. But spiritually, God endorses it because they got tired of being victims. They got tired of being pitied. They got tired of having someone to pity them. They got tired of attending the pity party. I tell the church, he said, he said, choose your friends. If they're always having this pity atmosphere, either you change it or you leave them alone. If you cannot change the atmosphere, get out of here. God sent you there to be a light. But if they're always talking about, oh, well, you know, uh, my husband or something tipped me back, my husband left me, or my husband is threatening to leave me, I lost money two years ago, three years ago, and that happened, and they have nothing good to say. If you can't change that atmosphere, leave it, because if you don't leave that particular group, very, very soon you start talking like them. It's like, you know, somebody said, uh, you know, I put this money in this business and it didn't work. And he said, yeah, yeah, me too. See, that was like three years ago. So now you, got, you have a partner. Before you know it, it's like, oh, there's another sister too who also went the same thing. So now you have a group. <laughs> Before you know it, you attend. And very soon, you start gathering just to, just, you know, eat and drink and share your pains. But these five women, numbers, Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Numbers 27. Mm -hmm. Until you get out of recovery, how long does it take you to recover? Somebody say a few years, a few months. No, when you are made whole, you don't need a long time to recover. You just get out and get in. Hallelujah. Amen. Numbers what? 27. Listen to this. Look at verse 1. And I want you to pay close attention to this. Pay very close attention. Because this is going to change your life. Verse what? 27, 27 verse 1. Then came the daughters, the disciples plurals. Then came the daughters of Zelopathat, the son of Heber, and the son of Gilead, and the son of Mepha, and the son of Manasseh, of the family of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, and their names, now he's giving you their names. Their names are, the names of the daughters are Mela, that's number one. Number two is Noah. This is not the Noah from Genesis to Passage. This is a woman called Noah. And the third one is Hogla. The fourth one is Milka. And the fifth one is Tisa. Verse 2, and they stood before Moses and before Eliezer, the priest, and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacles of the congregation. Stop, look up. Just look up for a moment. If you watch what they did, they have broken three laws. Because the tabernacle of the congregation should only be approached by men. Outside the tent door, there are priests. So if you're going to see Moses and Eliezer, you're going to have to go through the elders. The elders will take you to the priest. 
which will now take you to Moses. But they are now standing outside the tabernacle of the congregation. So how then did they get passed by the elders? And passed by all the priests. And is now standing in front of a high priest and a prophet. So how did they get to? Are you listening to this? Mm -hmm. Verse what? Verse three. Verse three. They stood there, saying, verse three, Our father died in wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his home city, and have no sons. You see, mm -hmm. these five ladies have one father. But their father died having no sons but daughters. So verse 3 says, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of the them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of God, but died in his own sin and had no son. Look at verse 4. Why should the name of our father be done away among his family because he has no son? Give unto us therefore a possession among the brethren of our father. Hey. They just broke the fifth. Another law that says when a man died having no son, his inheritance should pass on to his brothers. So it doesn't matter how many daughters he has, if he died, his inheritance should be given to his brothers. But then he, he now, these five women said, why should the name of our father be removed from the list because he has no son? That's too much. Then they said, give us a possession that belongs to us. According to the law, it does not belong to them. It belongs to their uncle. So when they made this play, God was watching. Look, mm. Moses heard something he's never heard before. No one has come that close, that close of coming to make a demand. Mm. Moses couldn't say no to this. Why? How did this woman even pass the elders and pass all the priests and is now standing in front of me and the high priest? Mm. Verse 5. And Moses brought their cords before the Lord. Look at God respond. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, the daughters of the Zerophite had They spoke right. I was like, oh, oh, oh God, are you trying to reverse what you say? Aren't you the one that said, when a man died having no son, he should give everything to his brother? Said, no, so God saw that they realized that they can't just live all their life feeling sorry for something that wasn't their fault. Is it their fault that their father have no son? No! Like somebody said, well, you know, I was raised in the east side of Africa, in the west Africa. My mother didn't have my father. We didn't have everything yet. Are you still there? No! Then come out of that recovery zone and get into the discovery zone. The women, they were done being victims. God said, they are right. Yeah. I was like, Moses said, huh? Yeah. They are right. <coughs> Verse 7. And the daughters of Zelophehad have spoken right. Thou shalt surely. Now, he said, Thou shalt surely, surely mm -hmm. give unto them the possessions mm -hmm. that belong to their father. It doesn't look like God is now reversing. He, he five women, mm -hmm. was able to get God to reverse Hallelujah. his own law. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. When you realize what belongs to you, when you get tired of feeling sorry for yourself, when you get tired of looking for somebody to blame, when you rise up and stand on your possession, there is nothing the devil can do 
to his country. Because even God himself will revise his yeah. own commandment just to give you what you want. Yeah. God actually changed the law of possession. He said from, okay, I know I said it before, but because of this woman from today, when a man died, having no son, ha, are you listening to me? So God is now rewriting another law because five women get tired of feeling sorry or being pitied. Well, you know, our father had no son, so all our father properties, they were given to our uncle, so we're just going to have to wait and see if somebody that had money married us, you know, so they get tired of believing that. Yeah. Yeah. For the first time in history, yeah. God changed his law. Because somebody woke up and said, hey, this is not right. Yeah. If my father had no son, why should I be the victim of my father having no son? After all, I am still a daughter of my father. So am I now the one who chooses whether a man should be a son only and be a daughter? I said, no, why should I be punished because of something I didn't do? When you get tired of being left out, when you get tired of feeling sorry for yourself, when you get tired of being sick, when you get tired of lacking, when you get tired, you will take what belongs to you. God said from now, when a man dies, having no son, but have daughters, get the position and dump it onto the daughters. The only way you pass down to the brother is if the man have no children at all. And then when you give it to the brothers, you know, God rewrites the law because someone realized if I don't do something, are you listening to me? Like somebody said, hey, whatever will be, will be. It's not true. We've said that a long time, several times that we're starting to behave that is No, whatever will be, will not be. Are you listening to me? He said, God said, I have given you the land. That's what he told the Israelites. I have given you the land, but you have to go in and possess it. And just because it has been given doesn't mean it has been possessed. And just because you have not possessed it doesn't mean God has not given it. So he said, I have given you the land, now go in and take it. Moses' generation couldn't take it. Mm. But Joshua's generation, Hallelujah. they're not waiting. If you study his generation, the generation wasn't, they, they, they're not the one that said we need water. No, no, no. Are you listening to me? Mm. When you study, when you realize that Joshua's generation, oh God, I've studied that place over the years, the wonder. When they got to Canaan land, they were dividing Canaan yeah. without fighting the war first. Yeah. Yeah. I've always wondered, who, who told you that you're going to win? They're dividing portions with people still living there. Mm. I would have thought you fight first. Mm. Then when you win, then you can divide your spots. But this time they were dividing. Oh, the tribe of Manasseh should take this one. The tribe of Judah should take this one. They are like giants living there. So before they throw them out, everybody know. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> when you get tired, these five women, they're no longer going to feel sorry for themselves. He said, why should the name of our father be done away because he has no son? Give us what belongs to us. Give us what belongs to us. And Moses said, God, what should I do? God said, you shall surely give them. And listen, from now on, and as you're listening right now, whatsoever that have made you feel like, yeah, this may have to be your situation until someday, come by, come by, God is going to do something about it. God already did something. He's waiting on you to make a move. There are 12 people in prison, and when the prison door opens, 10 looked, and they saw trouble. But two of them look outside and they're so ready. Just mm -hmm. get it. When you get tired of feeling that I'm recovering, I'm taking time to heal, you know, uh, I have been through so much. When, when, you can do that as long as you can. But when you get tired, mm. Revelation kicks in. Mm. 
And when revelation kicks in, you cannot be stopped. There's a woman called Hannah. You know her story. Benign and mocked her and mocked her and mocked her. She was a victim, you know. Everybody was feeling sorry for her. And the only man in the house who was supposed to actually do something about it couldn't even do anything. The man thought gift can kill the woman's pain. Over the years, I've felt very, very, dis very, very uh, embarrassed by the choices of Elkanah, uh, 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 Elkanah, the husband. You're going to tell me that you're married to this woman, you don't know what's hurting her. The Bible says, every time he buys a gift, he buys double and gives Hannah double. How? Well, that's not what the woman needs. Then one day the man come home and Hannah hey, have lost her appetite. He said, why have you refused to eat? I didn't know enough food in this house. Am I not worth more, more than seven sons to you? No, no, you're not even worth a son. It's like, yeah, yeah, you are my baby, but I need a smaller one that I can feed. Am I not your baby? Am I not much more better than seven sons? When the man couldn't solve what was going on, the woman took the matter into her hands. When she got tired of being mocked at, when she got tired of being pitied, when she got tired, the woman took the matter into her hands. She took the matter into who's on her hands. She was kneeling down there. And you think that agonizing in prayer is new. No, she was so serious and agonizing that even the priest didn't know what was going on. The priest thought that she's so drunk. She was kneeling down there, ma. She said, God, if you can use that card, and you should, and the mouth was moving and no sound is coming out. But because she's agonizing, because she got tired. When God has set you free, no devil can bind you unless you allow him. Devil cannot successfully attack you until he first attack your mind. Yes. Now, to worry, how many of you have ever worried before? Mm -hmm. Of course you have. To worry, you need one thing, your mind, right? Mm -hmm. You worry. Now, to complain, what do you need? No money. Oh, okay. so you get it. So, you need your mind to worry, and you need your mouth to complain. <laughs> but that same mind that you need to worry oh. is the same mind that the Bible say, be ye transfigured by the renewing of your mind. And the same mouth that you will need to complain is the one that God said, open your mouth and talk to the bones. So when you open your mouth and there's a, suggest a suggestion of complaint, say, no, I will not. Oh, ye bank account. I know you're showing me this balance, but hear ye the word of the Lord. Are you listening to me? Because if you look at the bones and they all, it looks bad, very dry. God said, speak to the bones. And God told him exactly what to say. When you're talking to them, forget about how they look. Talk to them as if they can hear you. Oh, ye dry bones. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. The bones can talk back, uh, but the bones have intelligent life the moment you start speaking. Yes. What do you think God meant when He told Moses to talk to the rock? Mm. So when you go out there, oh God was changing, He was upgrading Moses, and Moses made a mistake. Mm. The first time He strike the rock, when I come out, the second time, when I come out, God said, This time, go and stand in front of the rock and then talk to it. How do you talk to a rock? What God wanted is, O oh ye rock, hear ye the voice of the Lord. I want you to bring water for the people to drink. He didn't do it. Why? Well, how can I talk to a rock? I mean, it's a rock. They think can't hear me. I mean, how can I talk to my bank? It's a bank. Now, the, thing, the balance says I only have uh, $300. How can I even talk to it? The thing can't hear me. Uh -huh. Because you're not ready to be free. When you're ready to be free, you look at the account, you talk to it. 
Come on, open your mouth and say, O oh, ye bank account, hear ye the voice of the Lord. You will receive life. Your balance will be multiplied. O oh, ye credit score, hear ye the voice of the Lord. You will multiply. Hold your body and say, O oh, ye body, hear ye the voice of the Lord. You will not be sick again. You will not be sick again. You will live in complete divine health. Hold your head. Say, so, oh ye head. Oh ye brain. Oh ye mind. Hear ye the voice of the Lord. You will think clearly. You will be creative. You will think wisely. You will come with prophetic voice. In the name of Jesus. Finally, the man by the pool of the test. We've studied that place over the years. How the man get here? You know the story, right? The man by the pool, by the fifth chapter of Job. Yes. But the saddest thing that happened, they asked every time I read that place, I say, how could they not see it? The Bible says an angel. How often does the angel come and turn the world? Once. In what? In a season. And a season is approximately four months. A season. If you calculate it in a season, three to four months. Okay? They have winter and then they have spring and they have summer and then they have uh, fall. Okay? Now, an angel come in the season, and the Bible says, when the water is turned, the first person, not the first 10 people, not the first 20 people, but one person that gets in first, get healed. And once that is done, everybody now have to wait until the next season. Now, this angel doesn't have a specific date. If you have a specific date, then everybody would have probably maybe said, what to go? <laughs> So nobody knows when the angel will come. So they have to wait every day. Can you imagine you're waiting and you've been waiting and you have endured waiting 30 days and passing and you just went out there just to eat lunch or just to, just to eat yourself and you come back only to know that the angel has come. It was a bad situation. In other words, you beat yourself not to take breaks because you could sneak out to just breaks and it's over. You have to wait four months. Mm -hmm. So the day Jesus came and saw the man who couldn't get in. If you start that place, there are five pools, not one. And the Bible said, full of important folks, yeah. men's legs, men's arms, paralyzed. That means over 300 people that are sick, dead, waiting for one person to be healed. What a situation. I have wish that there's a way for 10 people or 50 to at least heal one season. But one. Yes. So the day Jesus showed up, talking to a man, do you want to be made whole? The man had been in that situation so long that he has, he has, his mindset has now been, been configured. All he's looking for now is pity. He has accepted that that's his life. Well, Jesus didn't listen to the pity. Do you want to be made whole? The man said, I have no man. That's not even the answer to the question. Do you want to be made whole? I have no man. Is that a good answer? No. It's not even connected. Do you want to be made whole? Yes. I would have said, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir, can you help me, you know? Yes, sir, I want to be made whole. But the man said, do you want to be made whole? The man said, I have no man. And then he started saying how that when the angel come before he tried to get in, of course he didn't stand the chance anywhere because he's paralyzed. There are people that can walk but no hand. There are people that are blind, they can walk. There are people that can see but they're dead. So he didn't stand the chance making it that fast. How is it that he came there, Jesus, and healed this man? And they look at the man, get healed by Jesus. Mm. Well. Mm. 
and they watch Jesus go, mm. walk away. And they say, ah, you all have to know. Congratulations. Ah, you're so lucky. We've been waiting. <laughs> The sad part is, once in a season, one person gets healed. An angel turns the water. The one who sends the angel, the Lord himself, shows up. And suddenly, only one person still gets healed. Why didn't they just grab Jesus? Why didn't they just reach out? They saw him heal one man. And they saw him just walk like that. Why didn't they just reach out? The Bible said he entered one city, and as many that yes. touched him, as many that touched him, not as many that cry and feel sorry, no, as many that touched, not as many that lose that, no, as many that touch. Not as many that desire it, no, but as many that touch. You know, many people, they have great desires, but they're not willing to do something about it. Don't tell me how much you know. Tell me how much you have acquired what you know. Yes. They want Jesus to walk away. Thank you, Jesus. I feel sorry. Because I was like, 200 people or even everybody would have been healed. But they watch Jesus pass. Come on, I refuse to watch my miracle pass. I refuse. Open your mouth, be on your feet. Be on your feet and say, I refuse to accept failure. I refuse poverty. Because I am rich in the Lord, I refuse to be sick. Because I walk in divine health, I refuse to be sick. Because I walk in wealth, I walk in victory. I refuse to be defeated. I refuse to watch my miracle pass. I refuse to watch my healing pass. I refuse to stay the same. I am making progress. My life is not up and down. Tonight, I am moving forward. Listen to this. In Jesus' name. You see, this is the last Thursday you have been doing this. And this Thursday, you're not stepping out here without you being completely free. You know, sometimes we use the word phrase. So our life is up and down. We have said it so much that it has, it's starting to feel like it's the promises from God. Life is up and down. Ah, like the struggle continues. No, according to the Bible, the life of a Christian is not up and down. It is forward and upward. Above only. Forward and upward. Forward and upward. But man of God, what are you trying to say? Haven't you read Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18? That the path of the righteous man is like a shining light that shines more and more and more and more. It doesn't shine today and shine lesser tomorrow. It shines brighter and stronger. Come on, say, my life is forward and upward. Begin to say it. My life is forward and upward. My path shines brighter and brighter. My finances shine brighter and brighter. My health shines brighter and brighter. My promotion shines brighter and brighter. My fitness shines brighter and brighter. My marriage shines brighter and brighter. My children shines brighter and brighter. Yes, more glorious, more glorious. Leha sata praka bosandori mabra hasata baraya. Leha sata.
have we received from grace to grace. Then in Romans chapter 1 he said from faith to faith. Then in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 he said from glory to glory. So God's plan was never, it was never five steps forward, six steps backwards. It is seven steps forward, zero steps backwards. That he talked about earlier after he left Egypt as a wanted man for 40 years Moses mindset was so broken that when God spoke to him he said ah, sir, I, I cannot go I don't talk too well I'm a stammer you know most of us theologians actually believe that Moses was naturally a, a stammer he was not he was not you're just gonna have to study the whole concept because Stephen talked about who Moses really was he never was a stammerer. If you study the seventh chapter of Acts of the Apostles, Stephen said that Moses was trained in all the wisdom. And then he was mighty in words. And indeed, he was a prince. And as a prince, you have to have all the trainings. And you have to be proven among the wise men for you to be proven, proven a, 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 a prince. But he has stayed too long in running away, losing everything he has. In fact, when he has his first son, he named his first son after his suffering. He said, well, this will comfort me because I have become a stranger in his statement. He's not comforting. He, he has broken. He God said, I cannot, I cannot go. I'm a stammerer. I'm a slow to speak. Please send another. And God tried to convince him. God couldn't. God now how to bring Aaron. But what Moses didn't know is that while he was talking to God, God was nudging his spirit and putting something. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, when he landed in Egypt and he was able to ask Aaron, but after the first and the second plague, watch, watch Moses in action. The one who said, I cannot talk, I cannot talk, I'm too, you know, I'm too slow to speak. Early in the morning, the prophet could go take his normal shower. He called up and said, God says the Lord. This is the person who cannot talk. He said, I'm, just, I'm, I'm too slow to speak. Who do you think was talking when they came to the Red Sea? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. They said, We are heavenly. The Egyptians are coming. And Moses, listen, he says, uh, uh, Please just be quiet. Uh, 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 the Lord, uh, he was not whispered. The Bible said, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He was talking to two million people. Do you think he was whispering? He said, the Egyptian you see today, you shall see them no more. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold the peace. This was somebody who said, I cannot talk. No. Say this after me, say, I refuse to lose my voice. I cannot lose my prophetic voice. I cannot lose my voice of faith, because I'm going from glory to glory. God forbid that a donkey will speak in my time. Because when God can't find anybody that will do the talking, then he has to send the donkey. 
but not as long as I'm still breathing and I can still talk. Even if you don't take my mouth, I will grumble in the spirit of you. They don't take last away from my mouth. Open your mouth and say, my mouth is for faith. My mouth is not to complain. It is for faith. My mouth is not to complain. It is for prophecy. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth.